Once you've decided you want a security system, it can be really overwhelming deciding which camera is the right one for you. Today we're going to talk you through lots of different options and explain the different form factors and features that the cameras come with. So here in front of us we have a decent range of the kinds of cameras that are available. This is just a small percentage of everything that's out there, but we've covered the main categories. So on the very specialised side, you can get cameras that are able to see in the day, in the night, and in the case of this one, a thermal camera can also see hot and cold, so it's useful for seeing through bad weather or tracking temperature of particular things. This one actually is sitting on a mount. Uh, mounts can be added to any of these cameras. Mounts can be from the ceiling, from a wall, uh, or mounted directly onto the thing they're trying to monitor. We've also got what's known as PTZ, or pan, tilt, and zoom cameras. This one is generally suspended this way up and can move around in 360 degrees of motion, and the camera can move up and down as well as in and out. So those are useful for monitoring a very large area. PTZ is also available in this format, which is ceiling mounted, and the whole of the camera is driven by a motor and can move around, and again, can move up and down and can zoom in and out. Lastly, we have the fisheye, and the fisheye mounted on a ceiling and has a very wide field of view, which is uh, known as a warped image, so you have to uh, bring that image into a piece of software and de-warp it to be able to see it as something you can play out on ordinary devices. So once we've got the more specialised cameras out of the way, we're left with domes and bullets. Dome cameras tend to be mounted inside on a ceiling, or they can be outside under a ledge, um, but you don't want them outside in direct sunlight because they can suffer from glare. They're either manually adjusted, so you move the, the lens to point it to where you want to point, or some of them uh, are motorised so that you can do that using software, uh, zoom in and out to get the camera in the right position. And then you've got bullets, which tend to be more suitable for outside. So they're mounted on a wall and they can use you know, mounts like this one. Um, and lots of them have a, have a hood, which means that they are slightly protected from glare, which is why they're maybe more suitable for outside than a dome. So as a rule of thumb, although most of these cameras are uh, ruggedized and able to handle all weather conditions, if the camera is going to be in direct sunlight or direct rain, you're going to use a bullet. If it is outside but underneath cover, you're going to use a dome. So there's two different types of cameras and they vary depending on how they're connected. So you've got analog cameras connected with coax cables or IP cameras connected with ethernet cables. Generally coax cameras are cheaper but the price of IP cameras are dropping so there really isn't that much in it. The coax system is actually the original way that CCTV was uh, connected. So it's a single cable with an uh, insulating wire around it. You'll recognise it from TV aerials, that kind of thing. And it just plugs into the back of the DVR. DVR is the key thing to remember. There's DVRs and there's MVRs. So DV DVR is a digital video recorder, which is always coax. The disadvantage of the coax system is that you've got to also supply 12 volts of power to every camera. And with IP systems, they're all powered and get their network over one cable. So they've got an Ethernet connector here and just connect to the NVR, which is a network video recorder, just via the Ethernet cable. So that makes the installation much simpler because you don't need to run power to each camera as well. So when it comes to connecting any of these systems up to the cloud so you can watch your footage remotely and view live video remotely, it's very straightforward. In the case of analog systems, the beauty is you can take a really old system running coax with low-end cameras or even modern uh, new cameras without replacing the cables as long as the recorder, the DVR, has a network port on the back. So typically everything made in the last 10 years is going to work that way. And that will then plug into the local switch which is able to connect to something like the Videoloft cloud adapter and boom, you've got that whole system upgraded to cloud recording with very little investment. It's also very easy to add an IP camera system up to the network. Most recorders also have a Ethernet port on the back and it's the same thing. Very simple installation. However, if you don't want any local recording, there is a way to do that with IP cameras. So to get rid of the recorder completely and solely record the video to the cloud, all you need is a P over E switch, which is power over Ethernet. 
This one has got five ports, but only four of the ports are power over ethernet. So they're the ones you need to use for your cameras to give them both power and internet over one cable. And then you just need to make sure that the Videoloft cloud adapter is connected to the same network. Here at Videoloft, we test hundreds of cameras and dozens of switches on a routine basis. We know a lot about what's reliable and what is not. And we can say categorically avoid switches that are cheap from unknown brands online. They will let you down. Don't go there. They're rubbish. We can recommend well-known household brands, Netgear, Linksys, Cisco, and so on. And we'll put some links in the description as to who we'd recommend because they come in lots of different form factors. They can be put in communication cabinets. They can be put on a desk. They can have one or two ports or 64 ports. And most importantly, they are a straight swap for a recorder and they won't let you down. Another way to connect cameras to the network is over Wi-Fi. So there are Wi-Fi cameras available, which means you don't need the Ethernet cable connecting to the camera and the switch or the MVR, but they do still need to be powered. So you still need a power cable connected to the camera. So there are some decent uh, standalone Wi-Fi cameras available for the DIY market from people like Nest and Ring. They're fine. Uh, we recommend, though, for multi-camera professional installations, you should always go the wired route. It's still one cable, it's more secure and more reliable. So there's a couple of key numbers that will appear on the camera specs or on the boxes, and they're resolution and focal length. For resolution, we're talking about how many million pixels or megapixels are on the camera sensor. And that can start at the lower end of 1080p, which is 2 megapixels, go up to 4K, which is 8 megapixels, and right up to 12 megapixels. We've got a more detailed video explaining resolution, which we'll link to in the description. So focal length is usually quoted on the box, not always with the word focal length. The key way to find it is the number in millimetres. It's either given as a range, so for example, 2.8 millimetres to something like 10 or 12 millimetres, or it is a fixed focal length, for example, 4 millimetres. The reason why focal length is so important is it determines the field of view of the camera, so how wide an area you can see with the camera. So if your camera is up high and you only want to look at a particular re uh, region on the ground, you want quite a narrow focal length. And if the camera is close to the ground and you want to look at a wide area, you need quite a wide focal length. Rather confusingly, the wider the focal length you want to look at is a smaller number in millimetres. So the widest focal length is typically 2.8 millimetres, which gives you a big wide area. And a large focal length, the bigger number, like 12 millimetres, is a narrow uh, field of view. So it gives you a closer cropped image. An easier way to think of focal length is just to imagine holding your eye up to the keyhole of a door. If your eye is close to the keyhole and it's a short focal length, you can see quite a wide area on the other side of the door. As you move your head backwards and the focal length increases, so the distance from your eye to the keyhole increases, you will see a narrower field of view. A popular feature with Videoloft customers is two-way audio. So that's where you can listen to the sound recorded by your camera and you can also speak through your camera. To be able to do that, you need a camera that supports audio. Cameras can either have an inbuilt microphone or speaker, or they can have connectors where they can take audio in from an external microphone and pass audio out through an external speaker. Another popular feature of cameras which Videoloft supports is the alarm input and output. It often comes with cameras that have uh, external audio ports already built in, but it's worth checking on the specification whether alarm in and out is specified. If it does, it means that the camera can react to signals. Uh, they can be alarms, they can be beam breaks. It's all classified as an alarm event, and that will trigger the camera to record. So a gate opening, uh, a threshold being passed, that kind of thing is an alarm input. An alarm output is something where the camera has recognized something and you want to tr trigger an external event like a strobe or a security lighting system. There's so many cameras to choose from and that's just because there's such a wide variety of applications. Videoloft customers span from residential, small shops and businesses to large mission critical enterprise installations. But hopefully we've covered some of the key things to consider and if you need any help just contact us using the details in the description.